President Biden this week imposed strict new sanctions on Russia for its role in one of the largest hacking attacks in our nation's history. Also this week, the U.S. Treasury sanctioned suspected Russian spy Konstantin, Konstantin Kalimnik for his role in ferrying 2016 campaign and polling data to Russian intelligence, data allegedly provided by the former Trump campaign chair and recently pardoned Paul Manafort. Joining me now is the chairman of the House Intelligence Committee and former lead House impeachment manager for Trump's first impeachment, Congressman Adam Schiff of California. Congressman, thank you for coming back to The Sunday Show. Sounds good to be with you. OK, so I open this show by asking the question, so there was collusion? Is that what, we're, what we should take from um, what we found out from the Treasury um, about Konstantin Kalimnik? Uh, yes, I mean, it's hard to reach any other conclusion when you have Trump's campaign chairman, Paul Manafort, and his deputy campaign chairman providing internal polling data, not once, but uh, repeatedly, as well as key strategic information about their, their targeting in Midwestern states, their effort to win Democrats in Midwestern states. They're giving it to an agent of Russian intelligence. It's provided to Russian intelligence while Russian intelligence is engaged in a hacking uh, campaign against uh, the, the Clinton campaign and the DNC and engaged in a covert social media campaign to help elect Donald Trump. So hard to reach any other conclusion than uh, the Trump campaign uh, endeavoring to collude with the Russians to get their help and help them perfect their campaign against Hillary Clinton. Let's talk more about the, the sanctions that were um, announced this week. We'll put them up on the screen. And just uh, wondering, are those sanctions enough or are those sanctions part one of many responses uh, by the United States towards Russia? Well, I think it's a, a strong package of sanctions to begin with. Uh, there are still some remaining questions about how big a bite the impact on the sovereign debt fund of Russia will be. Uh, but the way these uh, sanctions are structured, it allows the Biden administration to essentially turn the screws further if necessary. Probably the bigger determinant, though, will be what does Russia do now? Um, if Russia continues with its malign activities, continues trying to interfere in our politics, continues interfering in the elections of others, uh, if Alexei Navalny is not given medical treatment and dies, uh, then you could very well see the Biden administration uh, turning the screws further. Um, but uh, but I, I think the president has signaled, while he's going to push back forcefully when Russia violates our interest in human rights, uh, at the same time, we're not looking to go down a spiral uh, with Russia. Uh, the president is open to a summit uh, with Putin. So we're going to look for areas to work together, but we're also going to stand up for ourselves, unlike we did during the Trump administration. Um, you just mentioned Alexei Navalny, who, um, as you said, is reportedly near near death. Um, do you and I think you said this, but I want you to repeat it if you did, that if he does indeed die, that you expect the Biden administration to turn the screws even harder uh, on Russia? I, I would hope so. Uh, I, that would certainly be my recommendation to them. Um, I mean, this is a, a, a terrible crime uh, and human rights violation. Uh, it's not the first time that the Kremlin has sought to poison its critics. Uh, and uh, and this ought to be met with a strong res response, not just by mm -hmm. the United States, but by our allies as well. Adam, Sch uh, Adam Schiff, <laughs> Chairman Schiff, uh, let's uh, shift gears and talk about Afghanistan uh, and the president's announcement this week. Let's have a listen um, to a part of it right here. When I came to office, I inherited a diplomatic agreement duly negotiated between the government of the United States and the Taliban that all U.S. forces would be out of Afghanistan by May 1, 2021, just three months after my inauguration. That's what we inherited, that commitment. It's perhaps not what I would have negotiated myself, but it was an agreement made by the United States government. And that means something. Chairman Schiff, is this a mistake to put out a definitive date like that? And, and how concerned are you um, about how this would impact U.S. national security leaving Afghanistan? 
Well, you know, I would say that if we weren't uh, already approaching 20 years in Afghanistan, uh, you wouldn't normally want to signal what your future plans are. But I, I think the president has concluded, and I think he's right, that the time has come to withdraw uh, and that we could be there for another 10 or 20 years uh, and see no appreciable difference on the ground. Uh, and uh, it's not as if staying there is risk-free for the United States. We're putting our men and women in uniform uh, at deep risk uh, every day that they're there. So I think it's the right decision, but it's not without risk. Uh, we will lose some of our insights, some of our eyes on what groups like Al Qaeda might do. And now Al Qaeda poses a bigger threat outside of that region today than it does uh, inside the region. But if the Taliban were to take over, that could change. But nonetheless, it's the right decision. It's the right time. It's probably overdue. Uh, and I'm glad to see that the, the administration is moving forward with this withdrawal. And Chairman Schiff, as chairman of the House Intel Committee, you're not concerned about U.S. national security as a result of the United States leaving Afghanistan. I am concerned about it. But at the same time, there are larger threats in, in other parts of the world I wouldn't be recommending that we send uh, troops to occupy those other regions and stay there for 10 or 20 years. Uh, so I think we have to adjust uh, to the circumstances that are, are present today uh, while we're mindful of the risk. Uh, and I'm also deeply concerned, Jonathan, with the risk to, to the Afghan people who have worked with us, to Afghan women and girls uh, who may once again be subjugated uh, by the Taliban. So uh, there are concerns. This is a difficult decision, but nonetheless, I think it's the right one. And with that, we'll leave it there. Congressman Adam Schiff, thank you very much for coming back to The Sunday Show. Thank you. Hey, thanks for watching our YouTube channel. You should know that you can follow today's top stories and breaking news and catch up on your favorite MSNBC shows all in one place. Download the NBC News app today.